In my previous video on aiming projectiles, we ended up with a turret that was able to launch projectiles at a target. This is nice, but what about the many other things that need to launch projectiles? While we could just copy the code and nodes from the turret, it would be better to put all of this into a separate scene so we can easily reuse it. So let's see how to do this. To start, we need to create a base scene. From that base scene, we can create any projectile we need. Here's the projectile we had before. The collision shape and sprite should be supplied by the inherited scene. This will allow for projectiles to vary in shape, size, and looks. But the code is a good start, so we'll be using most of that with some modifications. Here's the node tree for the base projectile. And here's the code that has been copied from the projectile script that we'll need to change. First, we'll export the speed property. This will allow inherited scenes to set their own speed via the properties inspector. This time around, we'll want to make our projectiles a bit more capable, so we'll add exported properties for a damage amount and an explosion scene path. This way, projectiles can damage things and spawn explosions. Down in the physics process function, we'll check if the collider has a collide function. If it does, then we'll call it, passing in the projectile itself and the damage amount. Next, we'll call a spawn projectile function, which we'll code next. In that function, we return early if we don't have an explosion scene path. Otherwise, we load the explosion scene, instance it, and set its position. We also set its rotation to the angle of the collision normal. Sometimes the explosion animation has a direction to it, so this will make it look right. Finally, we add the explosion to the projectile's parent. And that's it for the base scene. Let's create a turret projectile by going to Scene, New Inherited Scene, select the projectile base scene, and then save the turret projectile scene. Here's what the node tree looks like after we've re-added the collision shape and sprite. We can update the speed and damage if we want, and set the explosion scene path. Now that we have at least one usable projectile, let's see what we need to do to make a projectile launcher. Looking at the turret scene tree, we see that the raycast and timer nodes were added for firing the projectile. So the projectile launcher will be a raycast 2D with a timer child node. On the raycast, we set the cast2 vector to point to the right. This will align the cast2 vector with the angle of rotation. We won't set the raycast to enabled in the launcher's scene. Instead, we'll leave that as a choice when it's added to a parent scene. For the timer, we'll want to check the one-shot property. With the node property set, let's get to the code. First off, we'll add two signals, one called body entered and another called body exited. We'll use this to mimic the signals supplied by an area 2D. This will make the turret code a little cleaner. Next, we'll add some export properties. One for a projectile scene path, another for a node path to a physics parent, and another to specify the cooldown time which controls the rate of fire for the launcher. The private variables will hold references to the timer and the projectile resource, as well as a reference to the physics parent. We'll also need a flag, which will be used to pause launching projectiles during cooldown, and a variable to keep track of the last physics body the raycast collided with. In the ready function, we'll set the values to these variables based on the exported properties. In the fire function, we'll first check that we have a projectile scene to instance, and that we're not waiting for a cooldown. If either check fails, then we return immediately. Next, the projectile is spawned just as before. Note the collision exception being added for the physics parent. Without this, projectiles will collide with the physics parent immediately and go nowhere. We also add an exception to the raycast for the projectile. Otherwise, the raycast will detect the projectile and will miss detecting other targets. After adding the projectile as a child node, we kick off the cooldown timer and set the cooldown flag. When the timer times out, we set the cooldown flag to false so the launcher can fire again. In the physics process function, we'll check if the raycast is colliding with something or not 
and emit the proper signal based on that and what the previous collider was set to. Here's the turret's node tree with the launcher node added. For the launcher properties, we've set the projectile scene path, the physics parent, and cooldown time properties. We also check the enabled property since the turret will be using the launcher to tell if it's pointing at the ship. Now all we need to do is change the turret script to call the fire function on the launcher. We can get rid of all these variables at the top and add a reference to the launcher in their place as well as a variable to indicate when a target has been acquired by the launcher. Next, we replace the code in the physics process function to check the target acquired flag. If it's true, then we call the launcher's fire function. We don't need the spawn projectile or timeout handler functions, so we'll just delete them. And finally, we set the target acquired flag as the ship enters and exits the launcher raycast. Note how much simpler the code is now for the turret. The node tree didn't get much simpler, but that too can happen when we distill functionality into a component scene like this. Anyway, let's fire it up and make sure it works like before. And indeed it does. So there you have it, a component that you can use to make anything in your game launch projectiles. If you have any questions or comments about the projectile launcher, let me know below. And if you have anything else you'd like to have a video about, let me know that too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If so, give it a like and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next video on game development.